Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your weekend here with us at Fox 5. I'm Aisha Khan. We have a lot of news to get to, but first, taking a live look outside of our Fox 5 camera in. I can't read that. It's small. What does that say? Annapolis. My goodness. Guys, I'm getting old, but clearly somebody else has a birthday today and they're not as old as I am. Happy birthday, Matthew Capucci. Oh, please, you're just a year or two older than I am. I am 25 today. I don't look a day oh. over 14. I don't feel a day over 80. What so. I would give to be 25 again. Well, happy birthday to you, my friend. Thank you. I feel like I'm aging in dog years, but <laughs> if nothing else, you know, my gift to everyone else for my birthday is a wonderful weather. Have you oh. stepped outside this morning? No, well, you know, I did. So I, I stepped outside and with only a little uh, a sweater and I'm like, and then I ran back inside. I was like, I'm going to need a jacket. And oh, yeah. I turned the heat on in my car. Oh. I'm telling you, Matthew, I just don't like the cold. And you know, I mean, I should be a fan of fall because a lot of people are, but uh, as our colleague Jim Loke put it, that fall is the gateway to winter. It is. So. I, I'm not a fan of fall. I love summer. I love the humidity. Me too. Like, dew points in the 70s, that is my bread and butter. Yeah. Because it feels like juicy out there. It feels like a storm. Anywho, weather-wise today, we got nothing but goodness that we're talking about. Temperatures are cooler. As I uh, was mentioned earlier on, we have dew points very low as well in the 40s and 50s, meaning the air is refreshing, invigorating, nothing but goodness. We have the graphic show exactly what is going on right now. We'll start off with this. A taste of September is main weather headline. Radar satellite, mostly quiet, nothing much going on. Dew points are down to the 40s and 50s, meaning we're holding about the th a third of how much moisture was in the air last week, so good stuff there as well. And we're pretty much off the charts for what we typically see during the month of August, way down there below the not too bad categories. That's how you know we're in the clear. 83 degrees for afternoon high in DC, 80 Lovettsville, 79 in Germantown, 82 in Waldorf. Nobody anywhere near 90 degrees. The average this time of year is about 86, 87. Radar satellite future cast shown all day long. We've got clear conditions, maybe one or two high thin fair weather clouds overnight. Tomorrow, a couple of showers try to sneak in from the west. We'll see if they actually do it. Not expecting too, too much. At the beaches this weekend, good stuff there too. Saturday, the sunny here of the two days. A couple of clouds Sunday evening. Monday, a bit of a rain risk. One or two isolated showers out there. All things told, nice weather is here. But I gotta say, Aisha, I, the, the weather. You can't complain at all. Like, I this mean, is I guess you say nice stuff. weather, but it depends on who you ask. You know, and like if you ask us, right? Like you said, you like the humidity, you like the hot. I'm some like it hot, it. some like yeah. it cold. <laughs> all right, Matthew, thank you. Developing in Arlington this morning, several people are in the hospital and a restaurant is cleaning up a big mess after a car slams into an Irish pub in the courthouse area. The crash happened at Ireland's Four Courts on Wilson Boulevard just a little after six last night. Arlington County Police say the car crashing into the building sparked a huge fire. You're also looking at viewer photos and videos capturing some of the aftermath of the fiery crash. Now we are told that eight people are sent to the hospital. Four of them were in critical condition. At least six others were treated on the scene, including Mary Riley, who was working inside when the car came barreling inside the bar. We heard this massive, huge explosion, and we all just looked to where we heard the noise, and all I could see was just debris and smoke. I knew it had come, it had come from the top bar, because that's where it all was. It's like a small section of the bar. And at that point, pure panic just broke out, and everyone was screaming, get out the back, get out the back. Now, this is still an active investigation. We are, though, working to find out what caused that crash. We will update you as soon as we learn more on our website and at the free Fox 5 app. An investigation is underway after a police officer allegedly shoots a man in D.C. It happened near Mississippi Avenue and 21st Street Southeast around 7 last night. Police got a call about a woman being assaulted by a man with a gun. When officers got there. They say the suspect ran away and displayed a gun. Police say an officer then shouted multiple commands to drop the weapon, but the suspect refused. Two shots were fired. The suspect is now in the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Actress Anne Heche is dead one week after getting into a fiery car crash. She was in a coma and suffered a severe brain injury. Investigators say last Friday she crashed her car into a home in Los Angeles. Both the house and the vehicle burst into flames. 
Police say a blood test revealed drugs in her system, but more tests are needed to be done to rule out any medication that was given to her at the hospital. Her rep says Anne is, quote, brain dead and under California law, that is a definition of death. She was 53 years old. Author Salman Rushdie is dealing with major injuries while in a hospital. This after he was stabbed at an event in western New York. Police say 24-year-old Hadi Matar attacked Rushdie while he was on stage stabbing and punching him multiple times. Rushdie's agent says he is on a ventilator with a damaged liver, severed, uh, severed nerves in his arms, and will likely lose an eye as well. He is best known for his novel, The Satanic Verses. And San Diego Padres star Fernando Tatis Jr. is now out for 80 games after testing positive for PED use. The MLB says his suspension is effective immediately. Tatis is not appealing the ban because he says it was his mistake that led to a positive test. The shortstop claims he took a medication to treat ringworm that contained a uh, ball, which is a banned substance. Into Prince George's County now, two kids are facing charges for stabbing a gas station employee to death. Police say the 12 and 15 year old boys were selling snacks and beverages as at the uh, U.S. Fuel gas station in Clinton, Maryland on Wednesday. Right before that killing, now investigators revealed the stabbing happened after the miners stole items from the gas station. A worker identified as Israel, a King Bisote, confronted the boys, which led to the stabbing. He later died at the hospital. Police say they are very concerned about the rise in juvenile crime. We have seen an increase in violent crime with juveniles, uh, with many sorts of different violent crime. It's very disturbing to us. We're very concerned about it. Those consequences must uh, not really focus on the punishment aspect of it, but really about rehabilitation. Now, punishment can be a part of rehabilitation. Having consequences, in my opinion, should be a part of the rehabilitative process because I think if someone doesn't understand uh, the gravity of what they've done, uh, then they might do it again. Prince George's County Police have already arrested seven young people this year for murder. Both boys in this case have been charged with first degree murder and assault. The 15 year old is being charged as an adult. Continuing our coverage with the Montgomery County executive primary race, the elections board was supposed to certify the votes in the heated race on Friday, but that didn't happen after election officials found 102 uncounted ballots during a final audit late Thursday night. That's why voters have lost confidence in the whole system, I think, to some degree. How is that possible? Anything that keeps this, this race going, it's just exciting and, and fun and um, interesting. I've never seen a race this close with, you know, in, in a place of a million people. Now, both candidates expressed their gratitude. David Blair saying this is a reason behind a final audit. County Executive Mark Elbridge already declared victory at 42 votes ahead of his opponent. It is unclear, however, uh, how that may change today. A new report from the Virginia State Inspector General's office details what went wrong when drivers were stuck for hours on I-95 during a snowstorm back in January. Yes, we all remember that mess. The report cited several problems. It found that some snow removal contractors and workers were new to VDOT and did not receive proper training. The report also found VDOT failed to implement lessons learned from a similar situation that happened back in 2018. Investigators recommend better training and messaging so that drivers can avoid a similar situation in the future. D.C. police are looking for the person responsible for a deadly shooting near DuPont Circle. That happened around 9, 9.30 Thursday night on Florida Avenue Northwest. Investigators say a gunman shot two people. Stefan Johns of Northeast died at the scene. Police say the shooter drove away in an Alfa Romeo Giulia, which is a luxury car. They're asking anyone with information about this case to call them. 
The French bulldog stolen from his owner at gunpoint earlier this year has been found dead. Suspects took this little guy named Bruno from his owner on April 13th on Kansas Avenue in Northwest. Police say the theft was part of a larger one hour crime spree. A second dog named Pablo was also taken that day. He was later found and reunited with his family. The search warrant used to seize documents from former President Trump's Florida estate is now unsealed. Fox 5's chief legal correspondent Katie Barlow breaks down what was found. A federal magistrate judge in Florida unsealed the warrant to search former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence along with the receipt, and that lists what the agents took. Included in that list of what was taken, top secret documents, secret documents, a line item. Leaders in the district are working to help migraines bust here from Texas. The uh, D.C. Attorney General's office is offering $150,000 grant to volunteers on the front lines. Nonprofits and community organizations can apply for money to help provide housing, food, and transportation for migrants who arrive in D.C. A district judge has agreed to appoint an outside party to stabilize and reform Casa Ruby, as well as freeze a nonprofit's bank accounts. The LGBTQ organization shut down most of its operations last month, leaving many workers unpaid. The founder, Ruby Corrado, is accused of stealing more than $9 million in city grants and donations and leaving the country. Georgetown Cupcake in Northwest D.C. is back open just in time for the weekend. The store was shut down earlier this week by D.C. Health after an expired business license was discovered, along with some health violations. A new inspection yesterday found all issues were resolved. The shop is back up and running. And uh, masks are back in one school district until further notice. Students must wear masks in Prince George's County schools and other public places. The county health department uh, just updated its policy. The health department says it made the decision to try and control the spread of the highly contagious COVID-19 BA5 variant. The school year starts August 29th. The nation's top doctors are changing their recommendation on what you should do to fight COVID-19. The CDC's new guidelines loosen some restrictions. It also outlines how you can protect yourself better and what steps to take if you are exposed to COVID-19 and also what actions are needed. First up, non-infected people no longer have to quarantine if they come in close contact with someone who has the virus. Now, if you do test positive, you should stay home for at least five days and isolate from other people. But if you are fever free after five days and your symptoms are getting better, then you can end your isolation. Experts are also ending calls for social distancing. That's a big change for schools this fall as kids no longer are required to stay six feet apart. The CDC is also telling schools they don't need to do daily COVID testing on their students. Now, the agency is making this change because roughly 95% of people 16 and older have at least some form of COVID-19 immunity from vaccines by catching the virus or from both. Students 12 and older in the district are required to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19, though. Students must also be up to date on all other required shots. Families have a 20-day grace period after the first day of school to make this happen. D.C. School says the policy will be strictly enforced and there will not be a virtual school option for those who aren't updated on their vaccines. All right, folks, we are just getting started on this Saturday morning, and it's no secret the cost of living and commuting is costing you for sure. The small steps you can take to save on your way to work. Plus, it is finally game day. Well, we're talking about preseason here and going one on one with Commander's coach Ron Rivera. His take ahead of the game and how he feels after his experience with cancer. 
Plus, as we take a live look at Rehoboth Beach, Delaware this morning, what a gorgeous shot over there. Our birthday guy, Matthew Capucci, will have another look at today's weather. Stay with us, don't go anywhere. Fox 5 Morning, we'll be right back. Good Saturday morning and welcome to Fox 5 Morning. I'm Aisha Khan. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get started with a live look outside at Rehoboth Beach on this Saturday morning. What a beautiful start to this July 30th, this last Saturday of July. My goodness, time is just flying by. Matthew. Hey. Make a stop. Uh, I will do my <laughs> best. It's good to see you this morning, Asha. I gotta say, it's this last Saturday in July, yeah. and it certainly doesn't feel like July. It's I mean, summer is just flying by, and I have to tell you about the lake. Summer is like my most favorite season of all year. I mean, I could do it all year round, but. See, I, I love it, but I get stressed this time of year because my birthday's coming up, and I'm celebrating ah. 25, and I'm having my quarter century crisis. I, I don't like it. You're a baby, yeah, Matthew. Like... My goodness, you just had 25, Lord. I, uh, but I feel like I'm aging in dog years. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, it's beautiful weather outside right now. It's refreshing, invigorating outside. Uh, temperatures in the 70s right now, but those dew points are nice and low. They're comfy. We hit the maps. We'll tell you exactly what is going on. Today is the pick of the summer. Simply stated, no two ways about it. It is gorgeous outside. 78 right now in the nation's capital, 74 West Springfield, 77 in Waldorf, and 78 Colonial Beach. But the number that matters is this. The dew points are nice and low, down to 63 in D.C., 60 in Martinsburg. That's when the air is holding not too much moisture. Fresh at the top of the show was around 70. Now we are down to 64. So in addition to lower humidity, those northwesterly winds have pumped out all of the allergens, kind of getting rid of our pollen. Instead, a nice dry day, 87 for the high, 85 West Springfield, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. You see nothing on radar satellite right now, maybe a few high thin clouds just for decoration, but all told, pretty good day. High pressure in control right now, pushing offshore tomorrow. That's the warm front, kind of sneak north again. So a couple showers in the forecast tomorrow, but thereafter we start to heat up. 90s come back on Tuesday, and they stick around for quite some time. Aisha? All right, Matthew, thank you. Well, it's been a uh, violent 24 hours in D.C. Police are working to find out if two shootings yesterday are related. They happened just hours apart. Fox 5's Nana Sentu Bonsu is in Southeast with what police are telling us. I thought it was like fireworks because it sounded just like them. What she heard was actually gunshots just feet away from a mobile farmer's market she was setting up. Police say the call came in around 3 o'clock. When they arrived, they found a middle-aged man who was shot across the street from Oxen Run Park. We're told at least nine rounds were fired. Police say the man died at a nearby hospital. Ward 8 Advisory Neighborhood Commissioner Paul Trantham was driving home from work when he noticed the yellow... And that was Commander John Branch you just heard from. He is calling on people who know something to say something. Branch says even if it's an anonymous tip, let the police know. D.C. police cannot confirm if the drive-by shooting on MLK near the liquor store is connected to the homicide on Wheeler. But they are looking for a white car in both of those shootings. The woman accused of shooting her husband inside the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in D.C. will stay behind bars. A judge denied bail for 48-year-old Shantari Weems. She claims she shot her husband out of self-defense after a confrontation over whether he sexually abused children at the daycare she owns in Baltimore County. A judge also deemed her a danger to the public. D.C. police released body camera footage of an officer with his knee on a suspect's neck. This happened on June 29th. Police say two officers witnessed a hand-to-hand -hand drug interaction near O Street in Hanover Place in Northwest. One officer asked a suspect to turn around, but instead he ran away. And once the officers caught up, video shows one of them using his knee, as you can see here, to restrain the suspect. Police say the suspect was resisting handcuffs and had a bag of drugs in his mouth. MPD's Internal Affairs Force is now investigating that incident. 
Meanwhile, groups called for accountability and an end to police brutality in Southeast yesterday. The demonstration was in response to an off-duty cop fatally shooting Lazarus Wilson at the wharf earlier this month. The family claims it was racist policing. Officers say Wilson committed a robbery and was holding a gun that didn't belong to him before the shooting occurred. The investigation is ongoing. And here's a look at some of the top stories we're following right now. Our shooting investigation is underway in the district. It happened last night around 9 in the 4800 block of Alabama Avenue Southeast. Police say one man was shot. Homicide investigators were called to that scene. Fairfax City Police are investigating fake parking tickets that bear the city's seal. Officers say the tickets were submitted over the Turo mobile app. So if you or someone you know received a similar ticket and used that particular app, the department is asking you to contact them. The House narrowly passed a bill to ban assault-style weapons. It's the first time the House has passed such a measure in decades. Congress approved their previous assault weapons ban in 1994, but the law expired in 2004. The passage comes after the rise in mass shootings across the country with assault-style weapons often used in those attacks. The bill now moves to the Senate, where it is not expected to pass. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on U.S. Capitol is sharing 20 of its interview transcripts with the Justice Department. The department announced this week it is looking into former President Donald Trump's actions leading up to that attack. And Attorney General Merrick Garland said prosecutors will hold anyone accountable if they broke the law, no matter their position. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says he spoke with his Russian counterpart about a prisoner swap involving two Americans detained in Russia. Blinken urged Russia to accept the U.S. offer to swap Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan for Russian arms dealer Victor Bout. This was the first high-level discussion between Russia and the United States since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. No word yet on Sergei Lavrov's response. Meanwhile, crews in Ukraine are preparing to export grain trapped by the war. The movement comes just one week after our landmark deal with Russia that allows for the shipments of food supplies to millions of people facing hunger because of the fighting. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says ships that were already loaded with wheat and grain but could not leave the ports after Russia uh, will be shipped out first. The UN just has as to give Ukraine the OK for them to set sail. More than 100,000 Ukrainians have entered the U.S. since the start of the Russian invasion. Most of them have temporary permissions to stay in the country, according to government data. Now, this fulfills President Biden's pledge of providing a temporary safe haven to those displaced by the war. Police are looking for several teenage boys who may be linked to an animal cruelty case in Montgomery County. This comes after a Canada goose was found dead in a Rockville community. Fox 5's Jacqueline Matter spoke with concerned neighbors. This is the bridge where at least three teenage boys were seen running over away from the scene where several geese were hurt in distress and one was found dead. The new Mark Commons community upset after a Canada goose was killed along the bank of the lake on the night of July 24th. I don't think we have seen it, at least not in the last 10 years. Now, if you know who those boys are or have any details about that incident, you are asked to call Rockville Police. Right now, they have no significant leads in the case. There is a $1,000 reward for information that leads to a conviction. Alexandria Public Schools release their COVID guidelines for the new school year. All staff will be required to be vaccinated against the virus. The school district will provide masks and other personal protective equipment to employees. Employees will have to take a health screening every morning before reporting to work. For students, the school district says they should stay home if they've had a fever of 100 degrees or more or showing other COVID symptoms within 24 hours of going to school.
All right, it is time to check your lottery tickets as of right now. Yes, you know what? There was a winner last night in Illinois' Mega Million drawing. Matthew, I bought, I've been buying tickets actually. I uh, bought three last night, the, uh, the, jack, the jackpot of this over a billion dollars. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just sleep on it. Um, I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and I'll be, a, I'll be a billionaire and it clearly didn't happen. You weren't in Illinois last night? <laughs> No, huh? You weren't in Illinois I last night. I wasn't being in Illinois now. Here's a cool fun fact. So if you were trapped in a shopping mall and you could spend a dollar every second, but you couldn't leave until you spent, say, a million dollars, a million dollars would take you about 11 and a half <laughs> days, but a billion dollars, 35 years. That's if you spent a dollar every wow. single second. Okay, only you would know this information, Matthew. My goodness. It's like, I don't do well with numbers, and this, hence why I'm a journalist. Well, you didn't do well no. with the numbers last night. <laughs> I didn't do well with the numbers either. That's why I'm still here. I will say we are definitely hitting the jackpot with this weather today. Absolutely. Uh, it you is. know, I mean, this is ideal for a lot of people. And I was telling you off camera, I mean, I love the humidity. I love that sticky weather. And I'm probably one of those weird people who likes that kind of weather. <laughs> See, I love it too, because it, it kind of generates storms. So the hotter, yeah. the steamier it is, the happier I am. I love when it's you know, kind of feeling like air you can wear out there. All my friends think I'm nuts, but yeah. swimmable air is my kind of air. That soupy, you've been using that word soupy all, yeah. uh, all soupy, morning soupy, long. Soupy, soupy. <laughs> Swimmable. I'm trying to come up with new adjectives or something. Um, but I'm guessing from your forecast from earlier, when I was listening, uh, we are going to be going back to those temperatures at some point. We are, unfortunately. Today is kind of an isolated day in that the dew points are nice and low. It is refreshing outside today. But here's a seven day forecast. You know, today is sunny and perfect. Tomorrow, yeah, an isolated shower in the afternoon. That heralds our warm front sneaking in from the south. Thereafter, juicy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday onwards. And by the time we get to Wednesday, notice of temperatures in the 90s. Our heat dome is building back in. That'll stick around for quite some time as we flip the calendar towards August. Aisha? Thank you. Well, we are just getting started on this Saturday morning. Coming up next is a re recession looming. Why economists are still torn on the state of nation. Plus, an emotional homecoming for a little girl who's overcome a lot. A celebration for the final Uvalde shooting victim to be released from the hospital. And we are taking a live look into Rehoboth Beach this morning. What a beautiful shot right there. And those of you who are out there this weekend, enjoy it. Enjoy it because we are going to be uh, coming back up on those really, really hot temperatures back again. Matthew is going to take another look at that weather. Stay with us. Fox 5 morning. We'll be right back.